What's up guys, Leopold the Brave here of Fictional Fights, here to give you a guide on how to make your own Versus series. So before you do anything else, first you need to come up with ideas. You'll need something like a theme or atmosphere to kind of set the tone for your show. For example, my show Fictional Fights has this sort of universe outer spacey type theme. Death Battle has this cage deathmatch gladiator kind of feel. And Cartoon Fight Club has this sort of warm cozy poster type feel. It looks like he has posters as his theme. Like you're sitting in your friend's circle in the middle of your room, super high, talking about who would win between dank memes and Illuminati. So try coming up with your own kind of unique theme that will pull people into your show. Next, you need hosts. Or just one host, depending on whatever you like. Now while it's okay to take inspiration from other hosts, don't flat out copy Wiz and Boomstick, because I know those two were the first ones that came to mind. Come up with ideas for hosts that you think you would like, or ones that would make people laugh if you're going for a more comedic feel. Finally is matchups. Take two similar characters that you think would have a good fight and try and compare and contrast them to see who would win. I'd recommend starting out with characters that you already know very well, so that way you can take it light on the research. Which brings us to our next chapter. So, if you want to get down to research, first you're going to need to find sources, reliable places where you can find the character's strengths, weaknesses, and abilities. You can go to the character's wiki page to find out their abilities and all that, but you won't quite get an accurate description of their stats unless you go to a website that's more dedicated to versus debates. The one I'd recommend out of all of them is Versus Battles Wiki. While it's not 100% accurate, it's definitely more reliable and easier to have your voice heard than somewhere like Outskirts Battle Dome. But like I said, sometimes they're not always accurate. You'll have to do research of your own as well. Which brings us to calculations and power scaling. We'll get to power scaling in a minute. For calculations and power scaling, I'll bring in a character I know very well. And by the end of both, I'll see if the results I got are the same as what someone else would say. So let's bring in Jin Kazama from the Tekken series. Now again, we'll save power scaling for later, so let's get into a calculation. Find an impressive feat of your character and use math to try and find out what their stats would have to be to be able to perform that feat. Now we all know math is pretty tough, so it might not be your forte. Luckily there are several calculation experts on Versus Battles Wiki who would be willing to help. But if you're willing to give it a try, then let's talk about speed. Let's take Jin Kazama and figure out how fast he can fly. Here we see him flying until you suddenly hear the boom of the atmosphere. After that boom, he goes from the atmosphere to a low Earth orbit point in one second. The distance from the surface to the atmosphere is about 62 miles, which we will subtract from the distance of the surface to the low Earth orbit point. The reason why we do this is because the second started at the atmosphere and not the surface. So instead of 1,243 miles per second, it was 1,181 miles per second. Simply run it through a speed distance time calculator that you can easily find online and you get 4,251,600 miles per hour. Well, it sounds fast, but how fast? You can easily convert this to Mach speed to find out how many times the speed of sound they are going. Since we are measuring by miles per hour, let's divide by the speed of sound in miles per hour, or 678 miles per hour. And we get 5,535 times the speed of sound, or Mach 5,535. 5,536 if you want to get technical and round it all out. Now we can look at a speed chart on Versus Battle Wiki to see what his stats would be. Since Jin is Mach 5,535, he'd be massively hypersonic plus, since that includes characters who are Mach 1,000 to Mach 8,000. So great, we have a speed calculation. Now how do we get a strength calculation? Now we don't always get to see the full destructive capacity of characters. So sometimes we have to rely on who they've beaten and what the people they've beaten have done. This is called power scaling. While this is a legitimate method of calculating someone's power, don't go crazy with it. Don't go, oh this guy beat that guy who can beat that guy who can beat that guy who beat that guy's cousin who beat that guy's grandma. Yeah, you see what I mean. When I do have to power scale, I like to stick to a power scale limit of three. One for the character strength we're trying to figure out, two for who they've beaten, and then three for who that person has beaten. So we find out what that last person is capable of, and scale the superior characters from him. So Jin is our first character. He's stronger than Kazuya. What has Kazuya done? Well, Kazuya can easily demolish Jack robots, so how strong are Jack robots? Well, the Jack robots are equal to a meteor the size of the one that killed the dinosaurs as they destroyed each other in a clash. So the Jack robot is country level. So character number three is country level. Kazuya, who is character number two, can one-shot character number three, making him country level plus. But Jin is more powerful and stronger than Kazuya, making him large country level. So now we know Jin's speed and strength stats. 
Jin is large country level with massively hypersonic plus speeds. And wouldn't you know it, the creators of Fatal Fiction agree. They got these exact stats in their top 100 strongest video game protagonists video. That's how you should power scale. But when it comes to coming up with these calculations and power scaling, there are some things you need to avoid. Like I said before, you need to be careful when power scaling. Try only doing it when there's visual proof. For example, we see Jin beating Kazuya. We see Kazuya beating Jack Robots. We see the Jack Robot destroying the Meteor. Try not to power scale based on bluffs and assumptions. Or else you'll end up with something silly like Krillin from Dragon Ball Z being planet level because he beat Frieza's men, who beat Saiyan Saga Vegeta. Especially since the Frieza's men that Krillin beat up aren't the same ones that beat Vegeta, and we don't even see any of Frieza's men destroying any planets. Also, try to avoid scaling characters when they have the advantage in a fight. For example, we cannot scale Super Saiyan Gohan to Perfect Cell because all the other Z Fighters are helping Gohan in the fight. Gohan would have lost that beam struggle if it weren't for the other Z Fighters shooting Cell in the back. As long as you steer clear of outliers and stuff like that, you should be okay. So now that you know all about your characters, it's time to set up rules. What do you want to keep in and what do you want to leave out? Do you want to include non-canon stuff? Do you want to include outside help? No? Then just drop it. Rules are one of the main parts of finding out who wins in a fight. Giving Batman prep time and not giving him prep time makes a huge difference when it comes to whoever he's facing. The rules are important, and it's up to you to choose what kind of rules you want to use. So now you have a rule set. Who wins? Now me personally, I have a three-step method for deciding who wins a versus debate. It goes attributes, stats, experience. Now you may be thinking, why are attributes more important than stats? Now let me answer that question with another question. What's someone with faster than light speeds gonna do against someone who can stop time? What's someone who throws planet-level fireballs gonna do against someone who can reflect projectiles? I think you get the picture. Some attributes and abilities totally negate stats. That's why you need to make sure that whoever you're fighting has similar attributes so the fight is fair. And if your characters have similar attributes and stats, then it goes to experience. Who knows more? Who has the most experience fighting? How well do they know how to handle a situation? Try to find out who would come out on top from these three steps, and you'll have your winner. Oh, also, I don't have any notes, I just needed to make sure that this section had three parts, because the other sections had three parts and it was gonna drive me crazy if this one only had two. So yay, I cheated! Go make your versus show, and have fun doing it. Ah.